going to come and I'm going to give you the equation that I've come up with that expresses how much of an effect this barbell has on gravity, or rather the extent to which it dilutes gravity. So here's a point on the barbell, right there on the tangent, travelling down. It's also travelling up at the other side. There's a point travelling up at the other side, and they're both going to swap places. So to the same, all intents and purposes, it's the same point. And as it comes down, um, it gives us velocity plus gravity. Okay, it's coming down at a velocity. It's also got gravity pulling it down. It gets to the other side and goes up. We get velocity minus the effect of gravity. And the average of those two will give us um, the, the, how much gravity is left, how much gravity is having an effect. So if we put in some numbers, uh, let's call the velocity 50 and we'll call gravity 10. Say so it's going very fast, it's five times the force of the gravity. Then we can we can have a go at this, and we can go uh, we can go gravity plus velocity is 60. Velocity minus gravity is 40. Okay, the average is 50, and gravity is only 10. 10 over 50 is one fifth. Gravity's effects will only be a fifth of the effects, the up down effects on that forces on it dilutes it to a fifth and the faster it spins the smaller this amount gets. Now we can actually instead of doing that which should have a g over it dividing into it that is the equation but we can we can simplify it very easily. Um, the average of um, velocity plus gravity and gravity uh, velocity minus gravity is those two added together divide, uh, divided by two, and in fact, if we do that, then it's just we get we get two v, and the, and the g's cancel each other out over two, they cancel each other out. We just get v. We put that all g over all of that, and our final equation is g over v. Gravity divided by velocity equals the proportion of gravity's effect. So once you've worked out what speed it has to go at in order to give a one-to-one -one effect, i.e. to have no effect at all, which, in, which when gravity has a value of 10, if velocity has a value of 10, we will end up with a value of 1. So when velocity and gravity have the same force, we, give, we just give, the, give it a number so that it has the same force. So we measure the velocity, give it a number so it has the same force as gravity when the thing is not and it's not having any of the effect of reducing the uh, weight, the apparent weight at that end. And then, we w and then we've got our number, and then we can make any calculation based on that. Um, because this pole is rigid all the way through, it doesn't allow the, uh, the remaining weight to transfer anywhere. It, it can't get down here. You know, the weight cannot pull down here because the harder it tries to pull down the more gravity is going the more it's going to go back up again so the only thing it's resting on is this end this is the only thing it can push against to actually have express its weight it still has to the whole object still has to express its weight somehow but it can't express it here so it ends up having to express it at the end where it is being held um, why doesn't it express it here? Well, it's only simply because it's not being held there and because the pole is rigid. If the, if the pole had a hinge point here and you held it here, it would go and it would fall. So the, the only reason it's not is because you're forcing it. You're forcing it to be expressed at this end. Um, that's the point where it, it can't go down any further because you're blocking it with the desk. Um, and it can't express the weight at this end because you've diluted the effects of gravity, but you haven't changed the weight of the object. I hope that has helped clarify exactly what happens with this spinning barbell.